Hello folks, this is Mike. Welcome to my shop. In part one of this three-part video series on building and installing the vertical drawer, we built the drawer box itself. Now today, in part two, we're going to look at a couple of different methods to install our slides and to successfully dock our completed drawer assembly in your cabinet or piece of furniture. Now the problem with these vertical drawers is that normally they would require three or more slides. I've tried it with just two, but to me the results are just too, well, wobbly. So today we're going to use a simple, uncomplicated method to install these slides. We're going to make just a couple of simple measurements. We'll have to have a couple of shop-made simple jigs and absolutely no math. So be sure to continue watching and remember if you can use a combo square and a measuring tape, you can install a vertical drawer. So folks, be sure to like our video and be sure to subscribe. Thanks. There are two basic types of cabinet construction. With a frameless cabinet like this one, there's no front facing to obstruct the travel of the drawer in and out of the cabinet. In this case, we can dismount our slides directly on the cabinet wall. Now with a face frame cabinet, it's a little different. We have to add uh, supports to mount our slides on. You have to add spacers or shims, if you would, so that the drawer can travel past the facing of the cabinet. Now if yours is a face frame cabinet, you'll need to measure the distance from the inside edge of your style, or upright if you would, to the cabinet wall. Lock in that measurement on your combo square and that's going to be the thickness of your spacer. Now, when I make spacers, I usually use just three quarter inch lumber. And if they aren't thick enough, I'll cut some small shims to go behind. And I'll continue to do that until I get them the right thickness. So when you cut your bottom shim, you need to make that shim wider than the top shim. And the reason is, is you have that half inch of space uh, or, or whatever your slide is under the drawer. And you need to add that to your shim. If you do so, you can set that shim on the bottom of the cabinet and screw it in. And then there's no complicated measurements. That, that thickness is already compensated for. Now once you have your shims installed in the cabinet, the procedure for the face frame cabinet for installation of the slides is exactly the same as for that of a frameless cabinet. However, there is an alternative method. Now I like to mount my slides on my shims first and then install the whole shooting match in the, in the cabinet. Now I find it to be actually easier, uh, but the procedure is a bit different. It will require a simple shop made jig and two sticks. So if you find this intriguing and you think you might want to try it, well stick around for part two of this video. Just don't install your shims yet. But first let me show you how we do a frameless cabinet. The first thing we want to do is to install our slides on the drawer box. This simplifies the fitting procedure. In both demonstrations, we will position one slide flush with the top and the bottom of the drawer back. And to increase side to side stability, we will center one on the bottom of the drawer. Once the side hardware is attached, we will dry fit the drawer box in the cabinet and determine the placement for our bottom slide. Using my combo square, I determine the exact center of the slide. Alternate sides back and forth until you are marking one line on top of the other. Lock in this measurement and scribe the top and bottom of the drawer. You can mark your bottom slide, but don't install it yet. Go ahead and separate your slide pieces now and position the inner part on the top line with the square end at the front of the drawer. Mark the holes you want to use and now you can go ahead and tap and drill your starter holes. I'm just going to install the front and back screw right now. After we have a successful dry fit, we can add the others. Now go ahead and put the two halves of your slide together on the drawer and make sure you have a good flush fit. We will use two square cut sticks. Uh, put them against the front and the back edge of the top slide. Now mark the bottom edge of the drawer. 
I like to mark each stick so I'll know which one I positioned at the front and which one I positioned at the back side of the door. Now extend this measurement by the thickness of your slide, a half inch in my case. This will automatically position the slide on your cabinet wall at the correct height to allow space underneath for the bottom slide. If you have your slides installed correctly, both measurements should be identical. We can go to the saw now and we want to take care to precision cut both sticks. And uh, we're just going to set those aside for right now. Now you can go ahead and install your bottom slide. It's critical that it's flush with the bottom of the drawer. Uh, of course, it, if you install it just like you did the top slide, you should be okay. Find the exact center of the drawer front and mark it at the bottom edge of the drawer. Now this will be to mark the position of the bottom slide uh, so when we dry fit it in the cabinet we can go ahead and mark that location. You can go ahead and scribe the line for the bottom slide as well but don't install it yet. This line will need to be in the dead center of your drawer bottom. Now we are ready to mount the slides in the cabinet. We will install the two side pieces first. We'll test fit it and then fit the bottom slide. First I'm clamping in a spacer piece the same thickness as the drawer front. And this will establish the correct inset. My drawer front is fully inset into the cabinet so I'm using a three quarter inch spacer. Now if you've got a partially inset uh, door your spacer of course will have to be thinner. Or you can just simply mark your setback on the cabinet wall and line your slide up accordingly. If you have full overlay doors, there will be no setback, so you don't need to install this spacer. When you install your slides, you'll just simply line up your slide piece at the front edge of the cabinet. Clamp on your measuring sticks, making sure that both ends of your slide will rest on them. Set your slide in place, flush up against the front inset spacer and then go ahead and tap and drill your starter holes and then you can install your front and back screws. Remove the sticks and move your spacer piece down to the cabinet bottom and clamp it in place. I've got a couple of half inch shims and we'll set one at the front and one at the back of the cabinet and our bottom slide will set on these. When the slide is installed, we can go ahead and remove the spacers and the shims and now we'll be ready to test fit our drawer. If you get a good fit, transfer the center mark on your drawer to the cabinet. If your drawer is inset into the cabinet, just take a square cut stick of wood and transfer the center mark and then use the combo square to measure your setback distance. Once the drawer is removed, you can mark this measurement. This will be where you will set the front of your slide. Also, now's a good time to slip your slide under the drawer and make sure your thickness is right. Now we can remove the drawer and fit the bottom slide in the cabinet. Now we start with a, just a piece of square cut scrap. Transfer the mark to the cabinet on to this square piece. Transfer that measurement to the back of the cabinet and then take a straight edge and scribe the slide center line. If you haven't already, mark the drawer front setback, position your slide in place, and go ahead and install it. If you're going to have a full overlay front, your slide will be positioned at the front of the cabinet so there will be no setback. Now remember that I had asked you not to install the slide piece on the bottom of the drawer. That was to avoid scratching our cabinet during the best fit. But we've done that now so you can go ahead and install it. So now is the moment of truth. Let's dock it and check our fit. It's easiest to start with the bottom slide and then align the sides. Of course it would really help if you had a helper or maybe if you had three hands. Okay, we have our on the money fit. So this cabinet is ready to go on the wall. Now as we mentioned earlier, if you have a face frame cabinet, you can go ahead and mount your shims in your cabinet and go ahead and follow the same procedure we just watched to install your slides. 
However, if you would like to try the alternative method of mounting your slides on your shims first and then installing the assembly in the cabinet, we'll continue watching. I'm going to show you how. As before, we begin by finding the center of our slide. Lock in this measurement and scribe a line at the top and the bottom of the drawer. This is where the procedure changes. We don't want to install our slides until we do a bit of layout work with the simple jig I was telling you about. So here it is, and I don't think you can get much more simple than this. This is a story stick, so called because we lay out our measuring marks on this little sliver of wood, so in essence it tells a story. Woodworkers have been using this method of measuring for hundreds of years, and it works just as well today. The bottom slide will require one half inch of vertical clearance. So set your square for half an inch and mark the bottom of your story stick. Also transfer the marks to the edges of the stick. To avoid confusion, I always draw an arrow to indicate the top of the stick, or I simply write on the ends of the stick, top and bottom. Set the half inch mark we just placed on the stick at the bottom edge of the drawer. Secure the stick and mark the location of the slide's center line. After you mark the bottom, mark the top line with, uh, without moving the stick. The measurements will be critical when we install the slides on the cabinet wall. As with the bottom mark, be sure to mark the all three sides of the stick. Use the same procedure we used earlier to install your top and bottom slide halves on the drawer. Uh, remember, we only want to install the front and the back screws for now. After measuring and cutting my spacers, I went ahead and stained and finished them. The logic here is that after they are fitted and installed, we won't have to remove them for any more work. I cut them about an inch wider than my slides to allow for mounting screw holes. The bottom spacer is cut one half inch wider than the top spacer to allow space for the slide under the drawer. Of course, we've already compensated for this distance on our story stick. Position the stick flush with the bottom of the board and mark the center location for your slide. This will be the second mark. Using your square, draw your line the length of the board. For the top shim, instead of using the story stick, you simply use your combo square to find the center of the slide and then to mark it lengthwise. We will use the story stick, however, to mark the bottom edge of the shim. After getting our line squared up, I put a small arrow on the line to make it stand out. Now we go to the saw, position the blade at the arrow, and set the stop. We'll cut two three-quarter by three-quarter inch square cut sticks as guides. We will be able to mount our slides on the shims before we install them and use the sticks to position them in the cabinet. I'm just going to mark them so they won't get away from us and we'll use them in a few minutes. We can go ahead now and mount our slides, but first we need to take a few seconds to consider where we're going to position them. My doors are 3 8 inch inset, so we have to position the slides so that the doors will seat properly when the drawer is closed. I'm using my square to set the overlap which of course is three-eighths of an inch or maybe a hair less. Carefully mark your holes and drill and mount your screws. Now we can mount them in the cabinet. Take the measurement sticks we set aside and clamp them inside the front and back of the cabinet. The clamps. Simply set the shim firmly and screw it in place. Since we precision cut the sticks, the slide will be level. Note that I've cut additional small shims to get my spacer thickness right. Since our half inch bottom slide allowance is built into the width of the bottom spacer, we simply set it on the bottom of the cabinet and screw it in. Now when I built this cabinet, I made sure my bottom panel was level without being dished or bowed. If you have these problems, your drawer may not mate well with the cabinet. You'll have to do some extra fitting to make it work. I'm installing some blue tape down the center of the bottom panel. 
This way if our drawer fits well in the cabinet, we can mark our center reference line for the bottom slide. Put a reference line at the bottom of the drawer front and then scribe our center line down the length of the drawer bottom. Finally, we are ready to dock. If it's mounted properly, it should slide easily in and out of the cabinet. Now check out that wobble with just two slides. Now that we have a good fit, we need to plot and install the bottom slide. From here on out, uh, the procedure is exactly the same as for the frameless cabinet we fitted earlier. We're not going to reinvent the wheel here, so just follow those instructions step by step and you should be successful. Once you get your slides installed, it'll be time for our final dry fit. It took a little doing, but I got it in there on the first try. Now I'm going to pull the drawer back out, and since we have an on-the-money fit, as promised, I can remove all of my blue tape and install all of the screws. Now, I'll be honest, no one's ever going to see this blue tape, so I was tempted just to cut off the excess and put it back in the cabinet, but I just couldn't do it. I did a complete disassembly. So once you get all of your screws installed and redocked, the fitting process is done. I won't make you folks watch me do that since it, it's a bit redundant. Well folks, we've installed our slides and we successfully docked our drawer in the cabinet. So we've done what we set out to do in this video. My next step will be to take my cabinet door and use it as a drawer front. There's a simple jig for that, believe it or not. And we'll be covering that in part three of this video series. So watch for that. Uh, also, I'll be doing a review coming up of the DeWalt 12 inch sliding miter saw. I've had the saw for about three months now. I put it through its paces and I would like to give you a review and my general user impressions of the saw. So watch for that. So folks, uh, be sure to like our video and be sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, thanks for watching.